But yeah, man, you already know what time it is. It is the premier sports betting show with the one and only Pop DBIC, the primetime capper. And man, oh man, uh, boy, oh boy, uh, what a day, what a day. We had a good day yesterday. Uh, we actually hit um, six out of nine of our bets in baseball last night, and we went two for two in a hoop in the hoop game last night. You know, we got the first two wins of the day. You know, we got the over in the Bucks game, and then we were able to get the. Um, the plus three and a half on the Thunder. Pacers got their butts swept up out of the um, playoffs last night. And pretty much the Lakers went ahead on Mamba Day. And uh, what, did, what did I say to y'all? I said the Lakers, this ain't even going to be close. Lakers by 20 or better. What happened? Lakers by 20 last night. And jumped out 15-0 run. Dropped 80 points in the first half. You know, there's not, there's nothing, there's nothing to criticize with the Lakers right now. And for people who feel like AD might be having a bit of an issue, just know one thing: what happened the other night was Lakers go up 38 points. AD been killing it the last few games, and so instead of putting him back in the game and get him pushed around, knocked on the ground a few, few more times, let's play like he has a back spasm, and then boom. He sits out the rest of the game. He was he just he just sitting out the rest of the game. You know, ain't nothing wrong with AD. He'll be right there for game five. But Blazers, you might have an issue with Damon Lillard. When they say that it's uh, unclear what the knee looks like with the first MRI, that means that something's wrong. Something's really, really wrong. So hopefully he didn't tear anything. It's just a high sprain or something of that nature. But... It looks like he's going to be a 50-50 game time decision for the game, in my opinion. So, pretty much people can't worry about what the Lakers ain't going to have. The Blazers need to worry about what they ain't going to have. So, pretty much that's what it is. That's the state of the Lakers. You guys go peep the article on Vegas Sports Daily as well, too. Um, we are at game four now, and you guys just peep it out. Let me know what you think of it, and we go from there. But, man, oh, man, let's go ahead and jump into it. I know you guys have been anticipating talking about some Sports. So up first, you know, we got the WNBA. But yeah, man, Lakers did well last night, man. LeBron got his 30 last night, 30-10 last night. Made it look real easy. Then you get 18 off the bench from Kuzma. You add in 13 from um Howard off the bench as well, too. The Lakers bench did a damn good job last night as well, too. They almost scored 60 points. But um Yeah. Man, I'm telling you right now. AD's just going to be get better and better as we go. AD's figured it out. Don't live and die at the three-point line. Step your ass in just a little bit. Knock down that easy 15, 16, 17-footer. Because if you're shooting 85% from the free-throw line, why not? Why not step in into that square, into, into the circle, and go ahead and get your shot on? He's dunking on a lot of people as well, too, bro. So, you know, let's not play like he wasn't doing that the other night in game three. You know what I mean? So, pretty much... He's a big man. He's supposed to get pushed around. He's he's not Shaq. You know what I mean? He, he, he looks big and strong, but the thing is though, he's not uh, girthy like a Shaq in a in a in a Zion or anything of that nature. He is kind of still like a a lean dude, so he's going to get pushed around a little bit, but he ain't going nowhere though. He's still there. You know what I mean? So it is what it is, man. All right, so we got the WNBA today and WNBA is back. And um, again, they put out a big, long spread on the Liberty. Nobody trusts Liberty at all. And we all know it's going to be a, always going to be a heavy bet for whatever team's playing them. So today they draw the Aces and the Aces. Well, no, I'm sorry. They ain't drawing the Aces. They draw in the Sky. I'm sorry about that. The Aces are playing a wing. I'm sorry. But um, yeah, they draw the Sky today. And um, the Sky, they rolling. They rolling and... They playing very well against the Eastern Conference as well, too. And they're the top team in the East right now as well. So pretty much uh, this is how I'm feeling in this spot. I really do feel that the Liberty will get the cover today because you have to understand everything they have put over 15 in this league actually goes the other way. You know what I mean? I haven't seen any of these teams cover a spread that's more than 15, that's more than like 13. You know what I mean? And I'm talking about the favorite. So pretty much this plus 19 and a half, I'll take it all day. You're literally telling me you're putting me up 20 points to start the game. Let's go. Let's go. 
um, professional sports as well, too. I know the Liberty have not been playing well, but, you know, they they somewhat get inspired every sixth, seventh game, it seems like. And when they're playing against these teams that aren't going to take them seriously, they'll be right there in the knee, knee deep of things as well, too. So plus 19 and a half, that's a great number. I think that we'll be able to catch that ticket right there. So there it is, plus 19 and a half. Liberty, we know, they, we know that they ass, man. We know that they're not good. But today, lose by 10, ladies. That's all I ask for, okay? Um, Aces, Wings, Aces are on fire man, right now, man. They really went ahead and said they they just take the money from me Saturday. They literally put the knife to my throat and said, you better know, you, you boy, you know you be rolling with the dogs. What the fuck, what you doing betting against us? And they went over there and rocked the Storm. Well, the Storm hadn't played against a team of the Aces caliber yet, and it showed, and the Aces are actually right now, a lot of people are getting excited about them winning the WNBA championship. I still think that, you know what, you, you simmer your expectations just a little bit because you still got the girls from L.A., you still got the Chicago squad as well too, and you never know what these little wild card teams that are were good last season, but are kind of going through the mid, uh, middling uh, stage right now, what they can do later on in the season as well, too. So the WNBA is still wide open, and uh, pretty much we're going to get to that in a moment, fellas. We're going to talk. I'm going to break the Clippers and Mavs on down for y'all so everybody knows exactly where that series is going to go. Um, under 166, Aces Wings. I think that we go under today because um, the trend with the WNBA has been the over. Literally, it was literally the overall last week. This week, I think the trend's going to stay go under. So, under 166, because I kind of expect the Aces blowout in this game as well, too. The Aces are eight and a half point favorite in this game, but I expect them to really kind of roll in this one. I, I think that they, they shouldn't take, um, they shouldn't take, uh, Pretty much, it, it shouldn't take much for them to beat the Wings today. I know the Wings played the Sparks well, but they always play the Sparks well. That's a matchup situation right there. But the Aces are playing some intense basketball right now, and they got some girls that can really finish. That's the whole thing. And, you know, they do have the, uh, the, the pick of the litter because they – Pretty much have every number one pick over the last five years as well, too, except for last season. So pretty much you have to expect this team to be in championship form. But still, they got a long season to go. The Wings really ain't no slouch. So that's why it's really tough to take the eight and a half today because I know the Wings have played the Aces tough as well, too. But I think we will get the under in this spot. So I'm taking the under 166. And then, once again, you got a big long line with the Fever today. They're a plus 15 going against the Storm. The Storm, come on, man. The Storm have lost their last two games in a row, and they're still going to give them a big number as a favorite as well, too. That's danger, in my opinion, because – they're struggling, and and nobody wants to admit that they're struggling right now. And didn't they already lose to the Fever as well, too? And then you're going to bounce back and make them a minus 15 against this team again? I don't know about all that. So pretty much, I'm going to take the over 165. I feel like there will be some scoring going on here. But that's a dangerous game right there. I know that a lot of people will take the Storm today because they're going to feel like they're going to bounce back. But... I don't, I don't know, man. We'll have to see. They are playing against a team they should beat up on, but they're going to have to prove that they're not struggling too bad. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. Um, we move on because we know we all want to talk about the NBA. WNBA, yeah, we ladies, you, you got next, but you know what? We got to talk about the men's, you know? So pretty much here we are, the NBA play all bets for today. And um, up first is the Nuggets game. Um, and I'm going to tell you all like this. The Nuggets got smoked in those in games two and three. Yep. And pretty much what I did here, I went over, see, all right, I'm going to explain to y'all in a second why, why you should, I'm going to explain something in a second, but, um, the Nuggets money line plus 130, I feel like the Nuggets could be a team that, um, can really, 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 uh, do they think actually the the Pacers game didn't go over, boss? <laughs> you know that 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 I know because it kind of messed me up a little bit. That one didn't go over um, yesterday. So pretty much the Nuggets money line plus one thirty. Um, I'm telling you right now, I think that this is the bet tonight uh, because simply 
The Nuggets owe us for the other night because they had that game won, in my opinion. And I feel like they figured some things out with the Jazz. And if they can figure out a way to to really, really kind of limit um, Donnie, then I think that they should be able to win this game tonight. But what they're going to really have to do is they're going to have to really figure out a way to get a third score in there. I know everybody loves the kid MPJ, all that good stuff. And I know everybody wants to watch Bo Bo and all that good stuff. But I think that they're going to need to get some efforts from uh, some big efforts from guys like Monty Morris who can step it up in the uh, clutch. And they're going to have to get some um, big moments from Grant as well, too. But, man, if nobody, man, I'm going to tell you like this. I think that Jamal Murray probably put on one of the most impressive games I've seen in a while in the playoffs. It was like the boy was really cash money, like cash, cash money. It looked good. He wasn't living off the free throw line. He was literally kill it, cooking them from the outside. And I feel like if he can duplicate that game tonight and they just play a little bit of defense, just a little bit of defense, take advantage of that height that they have, they should actually go ahead and actually run away with this thing, to be dead honest with you, if they play with their heads on their, if they play with their heads on a swivel. If they go ahead and say, we'll sacrifice some points to play better defense tonight, then I think that they should roll in this game. And I think the plus 130 is an absolute gift tonight. So let's see how it shakes out. I still think this series can go seven. Even though I got Utah winning the series, I'm still not really, really comfortable with them right now because they had to do all that and they still barely won the game by two points. So we'll see how it goes, man. We will see how it goes. But Jazz Nuggets has been a toss up since you saw the series get made. So pretty much I think that the Denver value is there tonight. And I think we got to go ahead and see see what we can do. You got to give him a shot. You know what I mean? I don't think the Jazz have it in them to close them out tonight. I really don't. So there it is, the Nuggets plus 130. Let's see how it shakes out. And here we go. And here we go. I know all y'all in love. It's look at this and look at that and look at this and look at did that. Well, yeah, that's great. But come on, let's not act like we haven't seen LeBron James do this for the last 15 years. Let's not act like we haven't seen... Uh, Russ and Harden do the same exact things in games and be called ball hogs. You know what I mean? Well, not LeBron so somewhat. But, you know, pretty much I know Luka seems to be a, a the new kid on the block. He, you know, he sees something different. And, you know, pretty much he had a great game. He had a legendary game. There's nothing you can take away from that. But the boy is playing on one foot. And his best play, and his and his his co star, his partner in crime is out, and I think he's pretty much out for the series as well too. Brzingis is not playing tonight, and it's not going to be the same Clipper team that they played on Sunday. The Clippers fell asleep. The Clippers were up twenty one points, and what happened was is that Luca went crazy, and he did get some some help from his co from his uh, teammates as well too. That's one thing everybody keeps forgetting. The team it, guys like Curry and um, Finney and Hardaway were huge in that game, dude. They were big time in that game. So I feel like that effort right there is the best possible effort that you're gonna get from the Dallas Mavericks for the rest of this series. I'm telling you right now, if that didn't didn't turn on the button for the uh, Clippers, then they ain't going nowhere. This is a test for the Clippers right now. I would say this. The Clippers know that they need to win these next two games so they can just, just feel that much better about themselves. Because if they wind up going to seven in this series, don't bet on them to be just walking through uh, Denver or um, Utah. Because I think Denver or Utah are better than Dallas, to be dead honest with you. Because Dallas has Luka. Yes, they have Luka. That's great. But at the end of the day, though, they they don't have enough defensively to really keep up with teams. The Clippers are playing in somewhat of a bravado situation. You know, they 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 run in their mouths a lot. They over there feeling cocky. They feeling good, and they haven't won anything yet. Kawhi has won stuff, but they haven't won anything. The rest of these guys. So I know that they've had some real gut check meetings over the last few days, and I really hate that I'm even talking about the Clippers like this because, you know, I'm a Laker guy. But still, I know that the Clippers are a much better team, and I've seen them dominate the Mavs too much 
over the last two, few seasons to say that the Mavs are really truly on their level. The Mavs had a day. They had a game. Both those games were awesome, awesome games from Luka. And they were games where big runs happened and the Clippers fell asleep. They fell asleep in two games. But tonight... They not they not falling asleep. They gonna stay on that gas as long as they as long as they can. And I honestly, and I know this sounds crazy right now, I expect a blowout. To be dead honest with you, Clippers by double digits tonight. But let's be safe here because the Mavs still loom the danger. And you know Luca's gonna be all up in this. You know Luca's gonna get thirty or better tonight. But still, will how will the ankle react though? That's my biggest question. And so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, take the over 234.5. The scoring should be at abundance tonight, and let's see how it shakes out. But those are our two playoff bets for tonight, and I just had to get a little spirited about it because thing is we got some pretty damn good games. These were some good games Sunday night, and they're going to be some good games today as well too. So let's see how it shakes out. Let's see how it goes, and we move along. All right, so there it is. We got the baseball 55 to 1 on the parlay today if you guys need it. And then um, pretty much we got the Phillies up first. The Phillies are have themselves up in a pretty even matchup today. I think that the Phillies should be good money, though. And um, we should be able to get them home with, a, you know, and get them home safely and um, go ahead and win this and take this bad boy home. So we're taking them with the minus 120 today. Let's see how it checks out. Then we got the uh, Red Sox and the Jays. And the Red Sox and the Jays. Boy, oh boy, these teams annoy me big time. I don't know about you guys, but they've been annoying me pretty much all year. So pretty much today, I'm going to say let's go under here. Um, I think the under should be um, hit. Yes, if you want to parlay it, buddy, you can go ahead and parlay the 55-1 to 1, um, if you like. Or you can single what you like most or just single all of them if you want. So we got the over 9.5 on the Cubs and the Tigers. And I feel like this one will be a pretty good game today. I think that we're going to have some pitchers pitching it up, doing have, dueling it up, and doing all that good stuff. And um, it should be work out very well. So um, I do like the under 11.5. Let's see how it goes. Then we have the Cubs and the Tigers. And yesterday, as I said to you guys before, the Cubs were a good, strong bet. They could be a good, strong bet today as well, too. But I don't trust Tyler Chatwood as much as I trusted um, my man pitching yesterday, Kyle Hendricks. So with this, I feel like they'll go over again. They went over last night. It was 9-3. Nine, nine to three. So I feel like we'll get a duplicate game somewhat of yesterday but the tigers might score some more runs as well too you know the tigers is playing the nl pretty damn good this season as well too so pretty much that's why i like the over here i feel like both teams are going to score runs today and over nine and a half and then uh louis castillo today uh i'm gonna go ahead and i haven't took them in a while on the money line and i know that um pretty much um I may I did make somebody pretty mad when I started bagging on them uh one day with the Reds, but you know what? Truth hurts sometimes, man. So pretty much, man, the Reds, I really do think that they should win this game today. They got their best pitcher on the mound. And you know the Brewers are, are wishy washy this season as well too. They had a big win yesterday, we know, because they were our MLB dog of the day. But today, we're gonna reverse and we take the Reds to go ahead and get the win for us. Cause they got their best pitcher pitching today and why not let's go ahead reds let's make some money minus 110 then you got the padres red hot this team didn't lose a game last week and they have the mariners coming in town i know everybody's like why ain't the mariners man i was expecting mariners on the dog pick four they'll be on the dog pick four at some point this week but you know the mariners got to cool off get a little bit of a break you feel what i'm saying so we're going to go ahead and take the Padres today. They're plus 110 on the run line. I feel good about this because the Padres absolutely dominated the Mariners when they went up to the Northwest to play them earlier this year as well, too. So they have a little bit of an advantage over this team. So I think the Padres, they keep it hot. They keep they keep moving forward, and they get themselves a good win today. I'm taking them with the one-and-a-half run line. Let's see if they can get us a win by two or more runs. And then we got the rivals, the arch rivals, the Dodgers. 
The Giants. The Giants. The lowly last place team in the West. Why the Dodgers, once again, running away with the West. And the best record in all of baseball. So what do we have here? The Dodgers are throwing out one of their young arms, Julio Urias. While the Giants are throwing out an uh, old man, old vet. But he's still feasible. Johnny Cueto. So pretty much Johnny Cueto. Probably uh, his final starts in uh, San Francisco as well too. Because they do have him um, on the trade block for this week as well too. Because you know the trade deadline is coming up at the end of the week. So... Pretty much what we will do here is I think Cueto will pitch very well for his little dress rehearsal for whatever team that's going to pick him up. And um, I think the Giants keep this game close. If they don't win, they only lose by a run. Man, I think that that's good insurance because we're going to get plus 110 on this bad boy as well, too. So there it is. Uh, there it is. Not plus 110, but we actually get a smaller number on this one um, to be exact. I don't have it right in front of me. So. Pretty much plus one and a half when the Giants. Let's see how it goes. 55 to one parlay. And I feel good about this one, man. If we can hit this bad boy, we done for the week, right? <laughs> we ain't never done, but you know, you know, y'all know what I mean. <laughs> so there it is. The dog in me. The dog pick four. And uh, the Angels up uh, first. Uh, we got the Angels plus 125. Hopefully they can get their get back today against the Astros. And that's what we're betting on today. They were very close in their game yesterday. Wound up, things wound up getting a little bit besides themselves. And pretty much um, that's what occurred to where they were not able to win the game last night. And not cash out that plus uh, one and a half for us as well too. So, pretty much, Angels, you owe us money. Get that money back for us, boy. It's plus 125 on the Angels. And then we got the Orioles. The Orioles playing against the Rays. Come on, man. They swept the Rays earlier this year in Baltimore. I don't trust the – I don't trust it. I don't trust it. Yes, yeah, the early game for the Angels. If the Angels are in a double hitter, so, yeah, that's the, the early game if they're in a double hitter. Um, yeah, game one. But, but yeah. Astros, I mean, yeah, Orioles plus 185. Let's see how it goes. You know, the Orioles been good to us. And you know what? You know what they get to be? They get to be the dog of the day. Because the Rays, y'all been pissing money off left and right. Y'all got me, man. Uh, I'm telling you. Got a bet against y'all today. So, Orioles plus 185. Let's go. And then we got the Pirates. The Pirates have themselves a pretty funny matchup today. You know, it looks like it's kind of one-sided, but this is where the, this is where the teams pop you upside the head in, in these situations. So the Pirates, they were good to this last time I took them as a dog. So let's go ahead and do it, do it again. Plus 200 on the uh, Pirates. Let's go ahead and see how that one shakes out. And then once again, we're going to jump into the battle of the... The Battle of the Midwest, the Royals and the Cardinals, the Powder Blue versus the Cherry Reds. And um, pretty much, let's go ahead and see how it goes. But I do like the Royals today, and um, we will take them with the plus 170. So let's see how it goes, man. 50-1 to 1 ticket for four teams. We, get, we sweep the board with this. We get the big reward, man. But if you're able to cash any of these bad boys out, you're getting big value today as well, too. So it is what it is. That's going to be the baseball for today. And then we move along to some horse racing. And uh, we're going to be over at Louisiana Downs. You already know what it is. This is a pretty good track. This is seven uh, race card as well, too. And um, our best value of the day is going to be in the first race. This horse is really all the class in this uh, field as well, too. Love and Lemons. And we're going to go ahead and take Love and Lemons to uh, get us a big win. It's probably not going to be a big pay out for it but if you put the right amount of money on it you can get paid something nice but it's gonna be a bottom out favorite most likely go off at three to two because this horse is really really levels ahead of the horse he's of uh, these horses he's he's a two to one morning line but when you see a two to one morning line on the horse that's supposed to be the favorite that's gonna shrink into most likely uh three to two you know what I mean? That's going to probably be the best number you can get on there. But if it dips down to two to five, it's just like, damn it. 
everybody at the track got the bet. So we'll go ahead and we'll see how it goes. But we'll box it this horse up with the this way one two four six or you key it one two four six. Okay, we move on and then we got the long shot today. It's gonna be a horse by the name of Dupeg. It's gonna be an allowance race that's for twenty three and a half k on the purse. And Dupeg is a really good horse that they're overlooking as well too. And I think that that's why. You know, we'll have ourselves some good dollars on this horse as well, too. I expect this horse to go off at 9 to 1 or better. So, do peg. Let's see how it goes. But we're going to pair this horse with the 3, the 5, and the 8. And that's how you would want to go ahead and um, key it. And then you box it 3, 5, 7, 8. And there we go. All right, so that's our long shot of the day, do peg. And then we move on to the uh, race 10 nightcap, and that's going to be another claiming race as well, too. But it's going to be for, it's a maiden claimer that's going to be actually for <clears throat> 22000 So pretty much we're going to roll with the horse by the name of Silky's Dance. Silky's Dance is a first-timer today as well, too, 12 to 1 morning line. They're probably going to overlook this horse, but the rest of these horses really did not pass the uh, Q test to me. So that's why I got to go with the first-timer because he don't know no better. He ain't never raced before. Um, all he knows is being at practice in the morning and looking good, and they got his numbers right, and and now an extra amount of carrots have came into his uh, stall. So something special must be going on. And he's probably going to want some carrots at the end of the day, too. He's going to want to eat something good tonight. So he's going to try to get him to try to get to uh, the finish line first. Horses know what the hell they're doing, too. So that's what's up. You know what I mean? So Silk is dead. Silk it! We're going to go ahead and roll with Silky. And it's going to be the, um, we're going to pair it up with the 4, 10, 7, and 9. Those are our other top horses for the Super High Five. You guys box it up like this, 4, 6, 7, 9, 10. And that's a $60 bet, Super High Five. It should hit for 200 or better. All right, so here we are, our late pick four in races four through seven. We're going to go, uh, we're going to actually go six deep, and we're going to go five through 10 here. And then in leg two, we're going to single out the five who should, who's the class of the field and then we're going to also go ahead and take the um, double uh, entries uh, the one in the 1a with the six horse as well too so pretty much if we get one of those one of those three horses home then you know we move forward um, then we have the leg four which is going to be the four, six, seven, and the ten. this will equate to a $24 bet and we're actually kind of lined up in a really good place as well too so we got our we got our horses that present value and then we have our horses that should be the box that gets us over to the next race and then we got the last two races where you know it's a we got horses that will be middling in a sense as well too and be a nice number hopefully we can take home a nice pick four if we're able to hit it all right so pretty much with that that's going to go ahead and wrap up the show for today i want to thank you guys so much for tuning in you guys are the absolute best man um i'm going to be back tomorrow at the same time 9 a.m pacific time and we got three games in the nba three games in the wnba a whole bunch of baseball games as well too so you guys make sure to tune in and also tomorrow we'll be talking pre escal downs for the uh racehorses as well too so you guys man keep the let's keep the movement moving we're doing everything right and uh pretty much once again this is the what the 37th show in 38 days we're going for a nice little record here i guess so pretty much man you guys get the access to me daily so if you want to become an exclusive client, though, you guys can sign up with me and become a primetime sports investor. You guys can DM me here on the Twitter or I mean DM me here on the IG or you guys can DM me on the Twitter at Pop DiBiase. And um, pretty much we can go from there. I got a great flat fee for you guys moving forward and everything like that. Um, also. This show is brought to you by Prime Wave Media Group. You guys go ahead and sign up for the YouTube channel, Prime Wave Media, and pretty much, you know, get all my great videos, all my great interviews and everything like that with 
big time boxers, Hall of Famers, all that good stuff. Um, so pretty much you guys can lock it in with that one as well too. And then you guys make sure to follow me, follow my other IGs, PTSI on IG and the Prime Wave Media Group. And also follow the Prime Wave Media Group on uh, the Twitter as well too. So once again, this is the Premier Sports Bet Show hosted by the one and only Pop DiBiase. And this is the Primetime Angles live on IG. And I am gone.